start recording. Okay, so back in the build doc, if you want to take a look at my screen, let me share at, well, let's share it at the uh, Discord. Screen. Alright. So take a look at this. Uh, Alright. Probably. Now oh, we can start here. So, well, let's take a look at the. So the picture of the foundation looks like this. So we we've seen this briefly before. It's in the build build directions section of Seed Home 2. But basically, what we've got is uh, so the foundation is 16 by 32, and that means the sill plate. Easiest way to do it is you take six pieces of 16 and span around it. There's a couple of points to keep in mind, though. Uh, so if you zoom in. So materials, let's talk about materials, what that looks like, and the quality control for it. In terms of materials, so, so this is what we got to round up and we can gather, uh, in the workshop, gather all this stuff around, but there's a bit of detail there. So let me zoom in on that. Underneath the foundation, the sill plate is the sill gasket. So you have the foundation on that is lumber. For any unevenness in the foundation or <coughs> a nice tight air gap, air seal, use the sill plate, sill gasket. It's that foam. It's just that foam material. And for under the two by four, you need the 3.5 inch version. All that stuff is in a pile of materials in a workshop. There's rolls of the white rolls, like this big, about a foot round of the sill gasket. Um, uh, what's it look like? That's that's what it looks like. Basically the rolls like this. Ours I think is white. Uh, this here is 5.5 inch. We've got two types. There's 5.5 which is for the 2x6's which actually goes above the sill plate because that's where we have the uh, now the 2x6 wall modules underneath the sill plate you've got the 3.5 inch stuff which is you've got all that by the torch as soon as you walk into the workshop it's on the right hand side the big pile there you gotta dig it out uh... what's a hammer stapler uh, 100 hammer stapler we'll use these to attach the <coughs> hammer stapler Have you ever seen one of these? So you put staples staples inside of it, and then you whack whatever you you got staple. So what happens? The easiest way to attach the sill gasket is obviously the foundation is very hard. You don't want to screw into that. You attach it to the two by two by fours that we're putting on. So the first step is after we get the sill gasket out there to the to the site, attach it with the hammer staplers, and then then put the lumber down onto the foundation. Only detail you gotta pay attention to is the corner. Like the corner is right there. And there's a the logic to the corner which says you look at the corner, what's happening there? Remember how the panels are going the long way? That the four by four uh, four foot panel lays here like this. It goes all the way to the edge, but the sill plate does not. Why? Because the panel is then used to bind the two together. So if you screw into like right there and right there, you've bound these two uh, two sill plates together. Does that make sense? That's structurally more sound. Otherwise, if you had it here, well. Uh, I mean, the other way, if you had this like this, well, then what's connecting this sill plate to this sill plate? Really nothing, because this panel is going to be up right here. The panel would be right there. So it's not connected. There's a gap there. So you're trying to get away from that. 
so this thing on the corner now what, what are we looking at here this is the top top view like normally we look at the house from the front so the lengthwise goes north and south so if you see that direction arrow there W that's west so north is to the right uh, so say you start any of these corners so what is the blue and what is the red again? <clears throat> in terms of the blue and red okay so remember we have the the blue that's the sill so plate the red is the insulation that's the out there we have the white insulation it's not pink it's the white stuff but the insulation goes outside so this sill so plate goes inside the insulation just on the concrete the detail is here if you understand that the sill yes. plate is like that now you'll see that this little chunk right here it's missing right now because we don't have it in there the, when we built the foundation we built it like this because otherwise you couldn't really smooth out the concrete so we have to <coughs> cut a little sliver uh, so one of the tools is a razor knife if I have it here razor knives so we gotta cut long slivers or we can uh, <coughs> I mean, table saw would do too. Maybe we just take it on a table saw. Um, but we need long, straight slivers that um, we can do it with with knives. If you take one straight edge, if you cut against, yeah. So you always have a factory edge of of the material that we work with. There's pieces of the styrofoam insulation at the site. So what we can do there is take the factory edge and just use the razor knife to cut that so we put the uh, I don't know the the bad edge one ed okay one edge is going to be factory cut the other one is going to be razor cut or we can put on the table so to get a straight cut um, we can do fine with the razor just use it use a long ruler or board against that, and you just cut against it and then break it um, razor or actually uh, more than that we knife because a razor does not go all the way through the insulation so a knife would actually be better we've got some knives in a tool chest there but what would make sense too is uh, so we've got the sill gasket you see right there it's a two by four sill gasket I'd like to make the top sill gasket yeah extend this sill gasket can I zoom in make that the two by six version do that so it's going to be laying on top of the insulation like right here. So why are we cutting a separate block of insulation and not having a single <coughs> right. sheet? Well, because this is what's already built. What you see here where the gap is already built. It's already there on the foundation. The foundation is flat, so when we were troweling it, you had to have that. You couldn't have that there because it would get in the way of your corners. So we built it like this, flat. The forms used to be there, like the wooden forms. So you didn't have anything on the edge to block your smoothing operation. So that's what we built, and that's you know that's that's uh, maybe disadvantage of doing doing this technique of how we did it with the insulation on the outside because typically people do it differently like what they would do is they wouldn't put the insulation at the foundation step which means they would have to add it like right now you'd have to be adding all this but because this insulation goes on the ground we had to add it we had to do it before uh, we're using the shallow insulated foot. otherwise we'd have to dig a big trench here which we're just saying okay let's avoid that the heavy equipment let's do it when we did the foundation when we put the forms around that we already did the insulation at that point so the insulation is already there now that little that little sliver is we, we got to cut off the existing insulation now um, the other detail is this the, sh the shallow insulated footer calls for and this is not shown here it calls for more insulation going out here so that's what we're going to do. We've got all that insulation that is still out there. Do, if you guys remember, there were the, that was the pile of white insulation. We're going to do this. Whatever's left over, because we already cut a lot of these slivers for all around the foundation from the existing material that's out there. But we've got about two and a half feet or so left over, and we're going to do this. That is equivalent to doing this, to going down, except minus the earthworks. In the Missouri, you have to do three feet. So we could have done this, a lot of heavy digging, or we could do this. 
no digging because we're basically like we're at this level right now effectively like around the foundation is about there um, at the end so what we'll do is this uh, it's gonna look like this actually it's actually not there because the, that goes a little deeper when we do this then we still just try to slope it and you'll see it on the foundation kind of tries to slope down a little bit slope it down a little bit uh, so we we could add levels to our materials levels um, knife we mentioned the knife the insulation is at the field out there already it's gonna get buried by like six inches of soil or so so this is not exposed but above that you also need polyethylene or tar paper because uh, mice could chew that insulation up so you kind of prevent that a little bit by putting on uh, some polyethylene or tar paper above this also for roots that roots don't poke through it over time uh, so you want polyethylene <coughs> right here so just draw a line for the polyethylene um, is this like the black sheeting black sheeting the greenhouse? yeah okay. that either black or white yep we could use that or tar paper we've got rolls of old tar paper that's fine too that's all getting buried uh, tar paper is kind of this waterproof paper that's kind of critters don't like to eat that because it's got tar on it um, so I put that down there as uh, where is that nice have where is that polyethylene or tar paper right there so there we go that's what we'll do uh, so sill gasket underneath sill gasket above I guess when we do the yeah actually it would be convenient right now when we do the sill gasket just do it <coughs> where we get both the bottom and top attached to your board because I mean why not do, let's start with the bottom of it and then after we've got so now what we're doing is those those anchors remember the mud sill anchors they're in the concrete they're laying flat out to the outside we, we talked about that a little bit before so we got to wrap them around that's all that's connecting that those anchors are what's connecting now the the sill plate to the foundation we'll also bring a ram set gun out there so there's this thing called ram set gun what's that look like so this is all like industry standard stuff it's um it's not like it's not a gun but a ram set hammer this thing so you hit it with a hammer you hit the back on a with a hammer you load it with a little bullet and a nail and that shoots into the concrete so you use two and a half inch nails um, I'll take that out it's uh, I'll put it on a list here Ramset gun plus nails why do we need that Uh, we talked a little bit in uh, so let's go back to the seed home to build instructions we talked about how the cutouts for the doors so this is where it gets now like how the modules fit. And remember how we did the first floor modules they had the bottom part for the placeholder for the door for example it has that bottom part which is actually what sits on the foundation so that's cutouts we have to make in the foundation according to the plan in there um, but build instructions no build instructions here for the foundation or so plate um, let's see not shown here but we can go into our dock here when we have this here wherever we make that oh yeah there, there is that detail in there already look at this look, look what's happening there we mentioned that the cutout that we take of this 2x4 we ram set now to the side so the door can sit on it the door module because remember the at the end of the day your panels are sitting like this like this over the pink they're not load bearing on a pink they're load bearing on the sill, ga sill plate now here the door actually this is the placeholder holder door that actually does sit on the foundation itself 
for which reason you need that plate that you cut out of the foundation and put on the side so it has more so like that would be the foundation that's laying there but that plate that you cut out from here you put here and ram set it in so that when you step on it it doesn't fall down so that's what's shown right there in the detail that detail applies to all the door openings but the pink is insulation no we cut it out we no got a foundation underneath the pink right now no there is no foundation under the pink so the, the blue the expansion board that you're drawing is not resting on the foundation it's not resting on a foundation it's nailed into the foundation with ram set from the side from the side okay so the nails go in like this here you got the nails they're going like this so it's because the foundation is concrete in order to be able to penetrate the concrete that's why you need ram set guns yeah you can also they do make nails that you actually ram with a hammer too they're they're hard to get in okay. the ram set is very convenient you, you tap it once and the bullet does the work for you um, but that's that's what it looks like there's a few like you know every foot or every six put in like schedule for that would be like put in two and the ends like six inches like that do that maybe like two more maybe maybe one more in the middle that's only four feet there so like five nails in there that should hold it or maybe even six um, We'll see. Well, once we get these ones on the side, you'll see how solid it is. You need maybe need one or two there. But that's what the detail there looks like. Um, so if we zoom out again, the same happens here by this door and by. So if you zoom in, well, that hasn't been put in there. So we gotta let's put that in right now. There's. Once again, the same story there. We we cut cut that out. It's already cut out, but the piece we cut out we put there, and we got to remove the insulation from that's We got to slip the insulation because the insulation is all over right now, everywhere. So we got to just cut it with a razor and take out the insulation, but only enough for the board. You're not cutting out down all the way. You're only just cutting out three and a half inches vertically because that's what the board is going to replace that insulation with the ram set. Does that make sense? Can you picture that? Or no? You're looking from the top and you, you cut out the 2x4 from the top and you put it on the side of the, side of the foundation. So is that the base plate? That um, like normally the wall module would have a base plate. So let's draw this. Uh, that's the sill plate right there. We cut it out there for this door. The insulation, let's draw the insulation more accurately. So the insulation ends there. Well, it doesn't end there. It's notched out. Well, that insulation should, should look like, and here it's drawn like that. It's only a sliver, like two inches out there. So that now the north part here. We zoom out a little bit. That insulation is on the outside. We're notching the insulation out only three and a half inches down. It goes all the way 18 inches down, but we're just notching it out there. But I, it's hard to draw that. The board is what replaces that detail there. We put the board there on the side of the foundation, so the foundation is actually, you know, going out to like right there. The garage door sits on top. Uh, it sits on top of the, of the board we si we just put there. So basically, when you step on the edge of the garage door, you don't bend it. You don't bend it stepping over the foundation. That's the idea there. Same applies to here, front double door. So what's critical here? This is a cheat sheet. So you have real dimensions, 58 and so forth. This is all accurate. This is 48. Uh, 50, sorry, 50. 48 is the ones in blue are ram set things uh, because when we did this we mod we modified it since we built the foundation so um, the critical dimension there is 50.5 to the door this is where you're cutting you take a skill saw so we'll do a little lesson on skill saw or then there's a 39 inch cutout for the door the door module we built remember it has the two legs the legs sit on top of the sill plate and the door actually hangs down from that module just a little bit so you 
close up the gap, that one and a half inch of gap there. Right, the one that's set, set a little bit lower than the, the two pillars. Yeah, basically. then the sill plates, yeah. Yeah, then the pillars, yeah, there's, uh, the door actually hangs down from the, the door modules that we pre-framed. It it's goes down below the frame so that it can close the gap that's below the door here. Right. Yeah. Um, but right now we've got the pink and blue. We don't have the blue. The, the blue is what we're going to put on. Uh, yeah. The pink is there. If you see, if you remove the blue, no, that's drawn in accurate because that's the foundation next to that. Uh, the foundation stretches all the way to where the blue ends here. Yeah. But the cheat sheet, so that on a cheat sheet you kind of see the whole picture of dimensions. Like when we cut out, the critical dimensions are 146 from the edge, 50.5 is 58 from the edge. Oh yeah, but edge where? We have to look at where, where we're measuring from. And I think um, we're measuring, oh man, uh, careful there, because if you look at where we're measuring from on that, it's measuring from sill plate. It's not right now. We're the where is where is 36 by 62 at the blue or at the red? It's red. It's red because uh, the wall panels are hanging over the red. So we define 16 by 32 where the panels are hanging out. So, when we measure this 146.5, what we want to do is put this one on first, put on the left side here, put on this blue one first, all the way to the edge, cut it off before you hit the insulation. Cut it off. So you're measuring from the blue, not the red. But that's good because that's what you built up there. You say, you, let's do a build order here. So probably if, if we're out there, well, one would be, let's call this one. That's one. That's the first one you put on. But also at the same time, you can put on the second one. This one, that's at the same time, that's first. Because then you're gonna fit the, the other one because you're measuring from the ed the blue edge. So that's so you're gonna do that first. So that's the build order. Um, yeah. Now, when we're working out there, it's uh, we can have people split into, we can people can be doing a top plate but first, what we got to do is it's it's kind of messy around it. So let's bring the weed whacker there, and shovels and tools, because Jeff kind of did the smooth smoothed out like these three sides more or less. I saw there's still some materials there and stuff there. So we want to smooth that out on the north side, the, sorry, the west side. Um, so let's like swarm that. Like all of us just get shovels and things and. Weed whacker, just get all the materials there. There's still some materials out there uh, on the side. Just get that all out of the way, cleaned up, so that we can put on the sill plates. You put on the full sill plates, then cut out the notches, is what we do. Um, see what happened there? That's, that's my wall module. I should get rid of that so we don't get confused. Oh, yeah, and I moved this thing. Uh, that should get moved back. This wall, that's just, that's how the walls are sitting on top. So we've got the critical locations. So in terms of the build order there is bring, so bring your cameras, clean up debris and smooth around the foundation, then place your, your sill plates. But before you place the sill plates, staple the, the gasket on. Because the idea there is now we're talking about rigor on mouse holes and air holes. So if you have those two, that makes a bad house. <laughs> Mice are getting in, like in this hab lab. That's before we ever paid attention to any of that. Um, now, you can never get rid of mice. They're, they're always going to find a way in, but you can make it hard, and th therefore it's not a persistent problem. It's a, you know, it's a temper, like here and there you get mice. But if you don't pay attention to that, you'll have mice all the time, uh, especially like in the country out here. So um, 
the sole gaskets are sealing the air holes. This is about like high performance housing, so you, I mean, sole gas gaskets are in industry standard. That's basics. We're going to put one below the sill plate and one above. One below is a 2x4, one above is a 2x6 version. And we'll get those rolls out there. Um, put on the treated lumber, place sill plates, that's six of them. Um, six times 16, we've got about 100 foot perimeter. It's 96 foot perimeter around that, so we need six of those sticks of the long, long ones. They're sitting, uh, they're out there in the piles. What else is there? So let's go through like all that we need to bring. Hammer staplers. Let's get four of them so we can do all that in a second. Staples. This should be the hammer staplers are in the materials. <laughs> we gotta dig through the materials. Uh, the OSC receiving area. Gotta get a few of those. We'll grab a little bit of house wrap. What I wanted to do is Today, when we work on it, it's, it's, I think it's parts of it going to be muddy. So what we want to do is lay down some, like on the foundation as we walk there. I think it's still kind of muddy. We can put down some house wrap or polyethylene plastic, so we're not getting the foundation all dirty. What we're going to do is take the pressure sprayer. So we've got two pressure sprayers. We'll clean it off, and then we we'll put concrete sealer on it, so it gets a kind of a shiny surface. Con it's con like concrete. Um, it's called concrete sealer or stone sealer. Um, so six of the two by fours. Let's get a couple of skill cells out there. There is a power outlet there. I think it's a single or double one, but there's a lot of power out there. There's a heavy power line out there uh, that we ran to it. So when you're working around it, don't like ram your <laughs> that power line there is live. So don't like take your shovel and s step on it and, <laughs> and cut it in half. Um, so power cord we could use like one or two power cords the power is there but we're going to need to reach the, the places we're going to be cutting out the notches so let's get a couple of power cords let's get like the trip power cord multiplier one of those multiple outlet things so we can plug into power cords make sure we have that razor knife yeah razor knife or knife more like knife they're in the red drawers there's a few a few knives in there or a pocket knife uh, cement. So a uh, thing I haven't mentioned is the detail of cement board. Well, all right. So take a look at that. What's here? That's cement board. Um, it says it's vinyl flashing. Slide. There's more. There's vinyl. Okay, so we got to change. We got to fix the label there. Okay, so what's it saying there? Okay, there's vinyl flashing there, but here oh, is cement board. The other stuff, so look at this, that's cement board. Uh, let's do that right there. That's the stuff protecting the insulation from getting chewed up by critters and by people kicking it or going into it with a lawnmower or whatever. You're protecting the soft insulation with cement board. We've got those boards sitting in the material areas. We, they're already cut. They're cut to 12 inches tall. So what we do is place it about even with the foundation level and stick it down into the ground a little bit. Um, so we might have to just dig like a little... The foundation there is kind of like all uneven so it's somewhat exposed but we might have to dig it like a couple of inches or just poke the in the cement board down uh, possibly dig a little bit with a heavy hoe. Uh, we just got to access so we can just slip it next to the foundation. Um, the pieces are 12 inches so we got to in places go down as deep as six inches more we've got to like dig out a little bit just uh, easiest way we can like with a shovel I guess go take a shovel next to it and just dig out without destroying the insulation there um, so that's the detail there this goes all around the foundation and then we can put the sideways going insulation put the tar paper or polyethylene on top of that and bury that with soil so we can walk so take the shovels out there uh, we'll also take the micro track out there, we, which we can use for that role, like of burning this down a little bit, and also uh, smoothing some of the area out there too. But this needs to get covered so that you know it's not exposed even right now. Things aren't chewing it up, or when we're stepping on it, we're not breaking it, and because it's just foam insulation. So that's the detail there. 
um, completing the materials list there there's a cement board number nine so take everything like all the stuff we are used to move saw around shovels pickaxe heavy hose rakes like grab all that there's some I guess I see saw some around the house there's some around Jeff's house so when we walk Jeff should be up there working on fixing his water leak so we should grab all the heavy hose shovels that might be there I'll try to grab some from our house as well but all the ones we can round up please round up we got the weed whacker out here. Have any of you used it? Does anyone know how to use it? I've used other weed whackers. Yeah, so we can take that. There's the flexible flashing now. Um, so vinyl, let's look at what that looks like. It's just a roll. Vinyl flashing. It's a roll like this. It looks exactly like this. This is what we got. 10 by 50 feet. So we need to grab two of those rolls since we got about 100 feet of perimeter. So it's just the 10 inches that goes, once we have the sill gasket on, this is flexible stuff, so we just wrap it around, but we don't want to puncture this. So what we do is just wrap it around, because this is the, your water seal. Like if there's condensation ever that gets on the back side of your wall, like this, well, this basically prevents anything that would slip under under the, the wall, makes it go out back outside, because it's like bent around, as you see in the picture. It's bent around the back. If you look at the detail there, so there's a little sliver we cut, but but the vinyl flashing goes up, so it goes above the the cement board, and then it's going to get pinched down once we have our wall panels. But for now, um, I guess probably the only thing we could do right now is fit it. Like just now, maybe don't don't put it on there because once we get the walls, it's going to like. We have to weigh it down or hold it down somehow, uh, so maybe maybe don't worry about that yet. But the useful thing about it is just to make sure it performs like we think. We think we can bend it around. It's just flexible plastic. It's like thick plastic, but we want to make sure that we can bend it and then bend it around the back. Then the interior panel around the back and the interior panel is going to pinch that down at the end. So the interior panel is going to go all the way down to the floor, like upon house finishing towards the end this is the interior paneling you're going to cover this so uh, where did that go uh, we're going to that's going to be the interior paneling so you hide all that detail there and it's a neat finished surface with your stone sealed concrete floor you can put whatever rug or carpet on if you want but we're going to just leave it at the finished floor just the stone seal the stone sealer on the concrete um, Let's finalize some of the other items here. Flexible flashing, micro track will bring down and cordless drills, because that's what you use to attach mud seal anchors. Wrap that around the, the plate and screw it in. So we'll, we'll get that out there. We'll, we'll do that kind of together, because so, the, there's a bunch of those anchors that we're gonna have to screw in. Um, let's see, what else? 1.5 inch. These want to be a tr exterior screws because we're screwing into treated lumber, which would eat other kinds of screws. Chemicals in treated lumber they make metals uh, corrode, so you have to have exterior grade fasteners. So we should have a box of 1.5 inch deck screws. Once again, the same star drive like we're using right now. They're only 1.5 because. That's the depth of the sill plate. Then you go into concrete, so you can't go more than 1.5. Sill gasket is, there's the 2x4 and 2x6 versions of it. We bring both polyethylene and tar paper. There's levels, there's knife. I already mentioned the knives. Ramson gut, gun plus nail. So maybe like put this on your cell phone or something like that. We take a picture and uh, you can go down there. So. Um, at the same time, there's, we're finishing up all modules, but I did want to put up uh, another rack so we can put in all the wall modules that we have, we can organize efficiently as we go about finishing. What we do is put an insulation, house wrap, and, a, and then the, the outside plywood, but before that, for the electrical part, we'll, we'll take select modules according 
to the electrical plan which is um, if we go to uh, seat home under build instructions I think in the wall modules design guide there's the electrical design too like basically you got to put outlets every so often the, the rule is that they have to be uh, every 12 feet at least in other words wherever you are within a room you have to have six feet to reach an outlet so in this dock just to electrical so this is the 101 on electrical there's the breaker panel that goes on actually on module number one then you go to all your outlet boxes in the walls so there's a basic explanation of how that works uh, but basically what you gotta do is put in junction boxes into your wall where you're gonna put your outlets or wall switches so onto the framing we're gonna attach these outlet boxes and then when we attach the outlet boxes we're gonna run wires to them we're not gonna connect them because they're not they're gonna run to they're gonna be connected from there's let's let's des describe that here so inside the utility channel you'll have this junction box all the wires from the breaker panel go to those junction boxes whatever happens after that within any panel is included in the panel so for example if you've got a light on a module or an outlet or a switch that junction box has wires that go to that and give power to it and then we run typically like one wire possibly two to each of this jun these junction boxes within the utility channel this way all the electrical is self-contained within the panel and all you're doing is running long wires from the breaker box to the individual modules inside the utility channel so that job is very simple and I mentioned before about not drilling through studs and all that that's what this is an easy way to do this so we're gonna add that still that's the work remaining on the panels that's why we're not closing them up yet but before we do this we actually have to have everything well organized we have to know according to the so the plan electrical plan so the concept I described in these few pages, Electrical 101. So where do you put all these? Um, where's the actual electrical design? Let's go to the very beginning. Like where do? How do we decide where to put it? The basic rule is every 12 feet. That means any appliance, any light, anything you want to pl plug in will be six feet to a, to the nearest outlet. And here is a super rudimentary electrical plan. So this module right here, that's module number one, ends up having the breaker panel. We can actually, um, that's inside the carport. It's still exterior plywood, but what we do is we, uh, we can, uh, we can probably attach it on the side, but we have to have a hole where, where the wires go through the wall. So the first panel needs a hole that's that's actually defined already but from there okay so you run all these wires just like this so you see like every outlet looking thing is an outlet so those modules that you see in this plan correspond those to the actual module numbers and we're putting an outlet into all those panels that's the first floor sorry sorry that's the second floor are we going to get to the electrical stuff today no so we should probably quit but I just wanted to say that there is like a basic basic deal so yeah maybe quit quit on that uh, but basically that's the concept uh, that's that's the stuff that's outstanding it's just kind of repeating um, okay but on the foundation here this is this is our master plan um, so take a copy of this make sure you have this and then we go by these dimensions like say the 58 inches and stuff like that um, yeah 58 and 72 72 is uh, what's 72 that's six feet so the wall modules that we built um, they have one foot sitting on a sill plate and the rest is the door things like that um, yeah 
yeah, th this should be pretty accurate here so we can lay the yeah let's see how far we get today but we want to probably get to lay down all the insulation cover that put on the silk plate that's probably what we could do any questions on this process so what's our first step clear around the foundation bring all the materials out there do you have another wheelbarrow yeah we do uh, we have one here which we can dump out the dirt easily. yeah we could do that one there's another one I think it's actually at the site okay. if not Katarina's got another one there so we'll grab tools from all over um, any questions on the overall process so clean clean up around the foundation and bring all the lumber we can stick the lumber in the back of the car we'll pick up 16 foot so it kind of has to ride on the yeah, we'll, uh, I'm sure the, the van is working. Let's see, is the van working? The van would be the ideal tool, but I think Jeff couldn't start it. Um, should be. Oh, okay. The van should be working, so you should pack it in the back of the van. Pack the lumber in the back of the van. Uh, there's only six pieces, so we can carry it over. We'll just walk the, basically here, it's north, go up the road to Jeff's house, and then turn left through the forest, and then keep going. But yeah, we'll be walking all up there. So let's gather up everything. Um, maybe take a picture of slide two and four, or two and three. I moved it. Uh, for quality control on a on a silk lay, just remember the overlap direction. That's all I gotta say on it. Uh, how we can mess up the <laughs> silk plate. Only way. And if we mess it up, just leave it. I mean, it's not a critical thing. It's less less structural but we're overbuilding so this this is not an issue um, but this would be the proper way to do it particular overlap that we discussed questions let's do it so I'll download a couple of these pages to my cell phone and go from there.